Hey folks, and welcome to our next unit, which is on chemical reactions. This is unit 11. Um, <clears throat> we're going to just start today by talking about what chemical reactions are, and then we're going to talk about how to balance chemical equations, and those chemical equations represent chemical reactions. We'll do that starting tomorrow. So let's start talking about chemical reactions. So chemical reactions are basically the rearrangement of atoms to form new substances. <clears throat> In our last unit, we were talking about different types of uh, compounds, right? So we were talking about ionic or molecular compounds. And basically what we're doing is we're taking those compounds uh, and we're rearranging them. Now it could be that we're just taking single elements and combining them with compounds, or we're taking single elements and putting them together to form a compound. But that's all we're talking about. We're taking atoms and we're rearranging them in forming new substances. And this is gonna involve the breaking and formation of bonds. So a lot of times we're gonna be making bonds, uh, sometimes we're gonna be breaking bonds, uh, but that's what's going on here. And this is gonna either absorb or release energy. Um, we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of that. If you wanna take chemistry, you can learn more about that. But what we're essentially doing is we're fundamentally changing what the substances are after the chemical reaction. So we take a look here, we've got our gummy bear, right? Our gummy bear is being fundamentally altered, right? It's being burned up, it's being consumed, it's being changed into this gas that's coming out. Um, we're creating this fire, right? That's that release of energy. Um, so uh, we're fundamentally changing what the substances are. We're changing what kinds of properties they have. Now there are two main types of changes that can occur. We can either have chemical changes or we can have physical changes. Chemical changes are what result from chemical reactions. Here we're creating some new substance, right? Again, we're fundamentally altering what it, that substance is and that new substance has new properties. So for example, burning a piece of paper, right? A piece of paper has specific properties. You know, I can, I can feel the paper. Um, it's, you know, in this case, it's kind of white. You can write on it, that kind of thing. It's got some structure. Um, but after you burn it, it turns into ash and that ash has a different color. It has a different um, texture. You can't write on it, right? It just kind of breaks apart. That's what we're talking about. We're making some Something with new properties. Physical changes, on the other hand, do not make new substances. Um, the substance stays the same. It, it's still the same thing. So for example, if we tear a piece of paper, right? If I tear the piece of paper, it's still paper, right? I haven't changed it into ash. I haven't changed it into something new. It's maybe smaller. It may have a different shape, but I haven't fundamentally altered what it is. I haven't changed the atoms and how they're arranged. Now there are four signs of a chemical change that you need to know. The first is a color change, okay? A lot of times uh, when something is going through a chemical change, it's color's gonna change. Think about the piece of paper, right? When it was burning, it changed from white to black, all right? We can also have a temperature change, okay? Temperature changes are oftentimes uh, examples of chemical reactions. Um, if any of you have ever used those uh, chemical ice packs, right, where you kind of break it up and it gets cold, that's an example of a chemical reaction that's actually cooling down. So they don't always result in something heating up. Oftentimes they can just cool down. We also have gas formation, right? Gas formation um, is going to create some sort of bubbles. Um, it's going to produce a gas that wasn't there before. And that's often a sign of a chemical change. Uh, in this reaction, we got baking soda and vinegar, which I think pretty much everybody's done, right? That's producing some sort of gas, those bubbles. And then finally, formation of a precipitate. Now, a precipitate is probably something new that you haven't heard about before. A precipitate is basically a solid that's made when you combine two liquids. So here we're combining this clear liquid with this blue liquid and we produce, it's kind of hard to see, but this solid here um, that you can see, it looks kind of cloudy <clears throat> like a cloud. Um, that is the precipitate and that's a solid that's made when those two different chemicals combine together. And again, you'll learn a lot more about precipitates if you take chemistry. Now, one thing that we wanna make very clear is that phase changes are physical changes, okay? So remember we learned about earlier in the year phase changes, right? Boiling, evaporation, uh, condensation, melting, uh, freezing, right? Those are physical changes. They sometimes can look like chemical changes, right? So for example, boiling produces a gas like we see on the left here, right? That produces a gas, but that gas is not a new substance, right? All you're doing when you're going through a phase change is changing what phase you're in, you're not changing what it is. So when we boil water, what we're doing is we're taking liquid, liquid water and we're changing it into gaseous water, right? Or water vapor. 
We're not changing what it is, and so it's not a chemical reaction. On the right-hand side, what we've got here is we have zinc and hydrochloric acid, and what we're producing is hydrogen gas. And so the gas that's being produced is fundamentally different than what you started with, and so those are different. So while gas production generally is going to indicate a, phys a chemical change, if it's boiling, that's not really the case, okay? So all your phase changes, those are all physical changes because you're not changing what the substance fundamentally is, okay? So that's all we've, we basically have for today. Now you just got a little bit of practice. Just identify, is this a chemical or a physical change? Are we creating something new or are we just changing like the appearance of something, but we're not actually fundamentally changing what it is? So what you want to do, pause the video, write down these answers, and you're going to submit it to Canvas. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.